Welcome to part one of four of DataBank basic training. In this training, we'll be going over logging into your DataBank, the help menu, easy query, and member record anatomy. To access your DataBank, you're always going to come to the databank.com homepage and click on the four clients link. From the four clients page, you can log in with your username and password. You'll first see the welcome screen, and first I'm going to show you how to change your password if you want to do that. You can see down here that there's a password strength indicator, and that's showing up because the system is telling us that we have a weak password. So if we want to go in and change our password, we can just click on the change password, and you can type in a new password right here in this box, and it'll show you its strength on the strength indicator. The other option is to use the suggest a password and have the system do it for you. When you're done, just save your new password and make sure that you let anybody else know who shares your username what the new password is. Next we'll talk about the help menu. Um, the help menu is a really important part of your data bank, especially if you're just starting to learn how to use it. There's a few things under the help menu, first being the user guides. There's a data bank user guide which contains fundraising information, and then there's separate user guides for the rest of the modules. Also there is the tutorials link, and um, this links to a series of video tutorials that we have hosted on YouTube. Um, they're anywhere from two to four minutes long, and you can watch them on demand. Next is the resources link. This links to a page on our website that contains uh, resources on how to get the most out of your data bank and some tips and tricks. Last is the support link. And the support link is really important. We really like to emphasize that you use this support link if you have a question about your data bank or if you're having a technical issue. And we'd like you to use this because it really helps give us a picture of what's going on in your data bank and because it's the fastest way to have somebody get back to you. So it's really simple. You just um, fill out your request type and the topic. Um, make sure you fill in your contact information there, either from the drop down or by typing it in. Um, you can put in a request or description of the problem. You can copy in an error message if that applies. Or you can let us know if you're working with any particular member records. Once you're all done, you just click Submit and somebody will get back to you quickly. Next thing we're going to do is a basic search in our data bank, which is also called an easy query. To get there, you can either click on the search button here or easy query right below it. Um, you can see that you can search for a person in a variety of different ways by last name, first name, company, email, or member number. Uh, we're going to search for somebody um, by last name and it's important to know that you can put in a partial spelling and it'll find partial matches for you. So we're going to look for somebody with the last name of Sample and click Find. And here's our search results page. It's showing us that we have 15 matching records out of about 10,000 with the last name of Sample. Now if you had searched for somebody and they didn't come up, um, that is when you would want to add them to your data bank by going to Edit, Add Member. And I'll be showing you that page shortly. So we can see here that we have two pages of search results. Um, if we want to go to the next page, we can click the Next button, or we could manually type the page into this box here. You can also sort your search results by virtually any field in your data bank using this drop down. And then when it comes to the actual search results in the middle here, we'll just quickly go over what these columns mean. Uh, the first one where it says contacts, if you're to click on this icon um, next to a person's name, it'll go directly into the contact history section of their data bank record. You'll see if you hover over their name in the next column here, it pops up a little box with some of their basic contact information. If you click on the person's name, it will open up their member record for viewing. If you click on the next column here where the address displays, that will open up the edit member table page for you where you can make any changes to their record. 
And then the last column here where it says vCard, this is a function where you can actually export this person's contact information into your personal desktop address book. So let's go ahead and click on one of these people and take a look. We've opened up Jim's samples record here. Um, you can see that since he's part of um, a selection group, you can actually go to the next and previous um, record in the selection. You also see um, links right below the person's name and those are the different sections of their record. So you'll see that some of them are black and some of them are gray. The black ones mean that they contain data and the gray ones mean that they're empty tables. You can see you can also use the vCard integration right from a person's record. All of Jim's contact information is displayed on this page, including address, phone, email, etc. A few things that are showing up over here are the source, and the source is basically telling us um, how we know Jim or how he got into our databank. So if you have forms on your website that are hosted by the databank, um, there will be source codes associated with those, so if somebody fills one out, it'll tell you that. Um, also, you can manually update this source field. So if, for example, like Spring 2009 Fundraiser, if you have an event and you want to add new people in, you could give them all the same source code from that event. We're also seeing some uh, contact preferences displayed here, like bad email and one, one maximum request per year. So I'll be showing you how you can set that up in the next section of this training. It's also going to show us when the record was last modified and who modified it, and it's also showing us when the record was created. This is the end of part one of basic training. Um, please proceed on to the second part.